valley of the shadow of leaf, of the, of the shadow of death, I will pray no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise God. After death. Hallelujah. I shall be told.
fellow brothers and sisters, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Praise God. I am encouraged um, on the scripture, verse 6, if I may comment. It says, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. No matter what we are going through, no matter how we are tempted, no matter how we are tried, he will give his angels charge over every one of us. Amen? Amen. Praise God. There's a song that came into my spirit when I came in the door and I'm going to help, I'm going to sing it and I'm going to ask you all to help me sing it also. It's uh, 363 in the hymns of glorious praise. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. Thank you. 
last week, I just want to give my very brief testimony. I didn't want to testify after last week, after um, Sister Linda just went up there and just preached the whole sermon. But I want to tell you that God is good. I went in on the Thursday, to the uh, Wednesday, sorry, of that week, um, to the hospital, not last Wednesday, the Wednesday before, went to the hospital for them to take out two teeth. But before I went in, I said to them, I said to the doctor, if the one is stable, I don't want you to take that one out. And I tell you, I counted the amount of time I was in there from the time I sat in the chair to the six injections that they gave me, to the uh, everything that happened. And I put, I said, can I play my music? And they said, yes, you can. I put my headphones in and I put my, um, I put scriptures on scriptures to music and I listened and it was difficult. I, I don't like a dentist, I'm not going to lie. And it was difficult, but within 10 minutes and 19 seconds they were over and she says to me, you can go now, the nurse said you can go. And I said, she said, it stopped bleeding. By the time I got to the uh, car, it started bleeding again. I don't like the hospital. I don't like hospital food. I don't like anything about the hospital. I've had enough time. Um, been unwell over many years ago. So what I then did, I just went home. And um, when I got home, uh, even up until midnight, when I went to bed, I had to, sit, I had to sleep sitting upwards. So I had to sleep with the pillows upright, and I had to, um, I, don't, I didn't have much sleep. So the next day, I basically, I did some work, but I didn't do a lot. But God is good. Because when I woke up in the morning, the bleeding had stopped. I didn't have to take any pain medication or anything um, over the next days, although they told me I'd have to take something and whatever. And God is good. He's good to me because some people go in the hospital for less. Because as I sat there and they started to give me the injections, my heart started to beat really fast. And I had to calm myself down. So some people go for the tiniest thing and they don't come out. So God is good. So I give my testimony of God's goodness and his greatness towards me. So I just want to sing um, this song today. And the uh, minister said, I don't want you to strain your voice, but I want to tell you God is good. Remember the, the, what I said the other day, what God did? God healed my voice. God healed my voice, a voice that I could not talk. I could not. Every time... I spoke to someone, I had to tell them I don't have COVID, I'm just stressed. And when you're a bit stressed with me, my voice goes. But the one night I was in bed, early hours of the morning, I woke up and I felt a heat on my neck and my neck was sweaty. And ever since then, God has allowed me to be able to sing. So praise God, so I'm giving glory today. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. hallelujah. Praise God. The testimony is not just for me. It's an open door to tell you if God can do it for me. Yeah. He can do it for you. Praise God. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake Till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord, for your mercies never fail me. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing 
Colossians chapter number three in your Bible. Colossians chapter number three. Colossians chapter three. Colossians chapter three. Amen. And I'm not going to be long. Y'all know me already. Amen. But I just want us to look very, very quickly. Um, just the two verses, and I'm going to drop something into your hearing. Y'all know that if you don't hear me preach for the rest of the month, y'all hear me on first Sundays. Amen. Colossians 3. And I'm just going to look at the uh, first uh, two verses. The first two verses. Yes. First two verses. If ye then. Are, are we there? Yes. Somebody say amen if we're there. <laughs> if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand. Verse 2, this is where I'm going to say, set your affection on things above not on things on the earth. I'll read it again. Set your affection can you read it with me actually? Set your affection on things above not on things on the earth. Thank you very much. God bless you. And so far, the scripture and the word of the Lord is already blessed. Amen. Amen. What I was looking at and through the course of the week, um, I, I, I read a lot and I study it and I ask God um, specifically what, where we, we going to go and how we going to uh, go through the month and, and direction for his church. And uh, as I was looking outside the window, uh, Minister Ruth, I, I saw and I looked outside and I began to see a change of season. A change of season. And you think to yourself, well, okay, uh, um, Andre, you're a little bit late because you're in March and the changes of season should have probably happened a couple of months ago or whatever. But I began and I was looking at some trees in my garden and I start to see the little buds coming up now on the trees. The little buds coming up. I, I looked in the, in the front yard and I started to see um, some shoots come up, some big green shoots come up. And AJ asked me, he said, Daddy, what are those? And I said, those are daffodils that are getting ready to bloom. We are beginning to see now a change of season. And some of us has been reading, and I've preached this message before, but probably from uh, another passage in Ecclesiastes 3. But, but some of us, if we be honest, we, we prefer uh, some seasons over another season. You have your favorite. Some prefer the autumn. Some like the winter. Some like the summer. Some like the spring, etc., etc. And, and we progress from one to another. Some people just hate the winter. How many people hate the winter? How many people hate winter? You hate the winter. How many people hate the summer? How many people hate the autumn? How many hate the spring? You hate all of them. <laughs> the funny thing about the funny thing about seasons, the funny thing about seasons, Mr. Luke, is that we cannot stop it. Uh, we cannot reverse. The season. Uh, the, the fact is that we had a winter last year, and in, 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 in my 41 years of living, there's been winters every year. But the fact is, no winter will ever come back and be the same as the previous winter. No season ever comes back and is exactly the same. Once God puts nature into motion, a great symphony will erupt all around us and all of God's living creatures will have to be in preparation for the change that is about to come. Somebody say amen. amen. Now from the smallest insect to the largest mammal, every single living thing is suddenly aware that a change is about to take place. 
Whether it's a bee, whether it's an ant, whether it's a moth, whether it's what you would, what we call them scarlet captains, that's what I call them, them big fluffy things, daddy long legs, whatever animal, whatever, whatever they are. All of them are aware that their season is about to change. And the same thing happens when we fully trust Jesus Christ to change us from a lost sinner to a saved saint. Dramatic changes take place for some of us. And to be honest, some of us are not ready for it, Sister Linda. We ain't ready for the change, but it happens. If we are busy during now, I really don't really like it. One season I don't like. I like the winter because you, you know it's nice when you can, you know, the, the fire, you can, you know, it's nice and cozy. I don't like the autumn because you have all of the leaves that you have to deal with. And, and they can get very messy and they can get very slippery. Leaves, you, you wash your car, your car's covered in leaves, and, and you, you, your front door covered in leaves. And then, you know, you, you brush away the leaves and you have to deal with all of the stuff like um, slugs. And um, what's the one with the, the snails, them ones. And you have to deal with all of those things. So you have to clean those stuff and get those stuff out of the way. There's a lot to do. And it's the same thing in our seasons with Christ that things need to be stored up, things need to be sorted. And when we're about to go into a new season in Christ, there are some things that we're going to have to get rid of. There are certain things that we're going to have to get sorted. There are certain things that are going to have to go into storage. And there are certain things that are going to have to simply go in the garbage. Somebody say amen. amen. You will be shocked when you do an inventory in your life and will see how much junk and how much things you really accumulate. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. Funny about that is you don't notice it, Minister Ruth, until the season is about to change. You don't realize how much clutter we have in our homes until the season changes for us to move house. And then you start to box up. You say, my God, I've been looking for this for years. And it was in the back of the cupboard or it was in the back of the closet. And, it's been there. and sometimes we go out and we buy extra stuff and stuff that we don't need, but we've already got them in our house. But we store up clutter. Or should we say we become... Hoarders. We don't like to throw out. It is Jesus, and I'm going to help you today, it is Jesus that helps us to discover that the useless things that we have held on to from one season to another season can be gotten rid of once and for all. He shows us that we don't need to carry a sinful habit or an attitude from one season to another. We don't need to carry an angry heart from one season to another and then make it to damage all of our relationships and all of our friendships. But through God's love, we can clean up our old self and know that freedom awaits us through forgiving one another. Somebody say amen. amen. We can set up that box of disappointment and broken dreams and unfilled desires and clean up our spiritual house. And we can put on new clothing of righteousness and salvation because I believe that is what Jesus wants us to be clothed in. Somebody say amen. Ecclesiastes 3, and you can study when you go home, read it for your own time. Those that have the message version Bible, I always teach you from the message version. Read that, it will bless you, break, break, things, break things down to you. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. To everything there is a season. There is a time and there is a purpose for everything under heaven. Alright? There is a season. Now, in our lives, we go through all types of seasons. Sister Linda will go through seasons of doubt. We'll go through seasons of despair. 
We'll go through seasons of anxiety. We'll go through seasons of joy. We'll go through seasons of hope. We will go through seasons of love. But know this, that no, not every season is going to be the same. Somebody say amen. amen. Life is full of, unch of changing seasons. Life is full of them. But here, this is the, the point I want to, to stress on today. Set your affection on things above. Not on things on the earth. Why? Because, yes, we spend a lot of money. Yes, we, we spend a lot of time and, and, and a lot of, uh, we invest into things on the earth. But everything that is on the earth is only for a season. It is only but for a time. Now, I have this phone here. Now, those of you that are Apple users. Apple. Very expensive. They charge you a whole lot of money for a device that loses value. Not only does the, you charge it and then after a certain time the 100% the battery, I'm talking about the battery health, it goes down. So before when I used to charge my phone in the morning and I'll be able to go out and have my phone and it would be okay for the whole day. I now notice that even not using it and keeping it in my pocket, that the battery level starts to go down. So it's not keeping me for the whole day. So I have to start walking with a charger or I have to have one in my car. But yet still I can't put my hopes and trust in this because eventually E are going to call me and ask me for an upgrade. Do you want to upgrade, Mr. Sims Morgan? Tie yourself into another contract. Pay a whole heap of money for just this thing. Just this device here. That I could drop face first. I'm not going to do it. But I could drop it face first. The screen will be cut and it will be no good to me. What's the point that I'm trying to make? I can't set my affection on these material things. Because they don't last. The value of them decrease. They no longer, you have to change them after a certain time. But here, I have to set my things, my affections on things that are eternal. Heaven is eternal. This home is not mine. This world is not mine. My car, I love my car. I'll shine on my car. And after a certain time, Sister Mr. Ruth, if you're on higher purchase, they call him and tell you, do you want to ch change your car? But yet still, if somebody crashes into me, or if somebody dents my window, or do something, and you pay so much money for your insurance, when you go to your insurance, the first thing they tell you is, they ain't paying for the damage. They just write it off. The value of it goes down. You may go to a showroom and you buy the fresh car. It doesn't have no mileage on the clock. But as soon as you drive it off the floor court, it loses its value straight away. What's the point that I'm trying to make? Set your affections on things above. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. I said it on last week. Fight the good fight of faith so that you can lay hold of eternal life. We don't come to church just because we, we want to. Huh? It's not just, just the fact of that. We come because we, we love to come, but we come because we are making an investment into our future. The reason why we come is because we are getting ready. The responsibility of the church is not just to feel good, but the responsibility of the church is to get us ready to be with the Lord. Set your affection on things above. Stop putting your value on things down here. Now, I'm not telling you don't buy good things. I'm not telling you that. Don't, don't leave from here and say, oh, pastor says don't buy good. Buy good things. 
But don't worship them. Don't make them to be your idol. Enjoy good things. Enjoy your good clothes. And buy a, a nice car. Yes, buy your games and your play on your, your PlayStation or your Xbox or whatever. Buy those things. Enjoy your stuff. You work, so you enjoy yourself. But do not put too much emphasis on it and forget about God. Last week, Sister Linda reminded us, and that message stayed with me all week, that we must put God first in everything that we do. You may play netball, huh? but give God thanks that you have that ability to play the netball. Because it's God that gives you your hands. It's God that gives you the breath. It's God that gives you the ability and the gift. Everything that you do, whatever you do, put him first. Put, set your affection. Set your affection on things above. Look unto him who is the author and the finisher of our faith. For many people in this room, many of us, we have been walking with the Lord for many, many years. And our seasons have changed. For many of us, we started off as, as, as musicians, singers in church. I was thinking about it on yesterday. And God has moved us from, from being musicians of into being ministers of preaching the gospel. For many people in here, you're just starting your walk. You're just starting your journey with God. Yes, and I'm not saying that you haven't acknowledged God. I'm not saying that. But now you're starting to, to put God first and you're coming to church and you're growing and you're developing. It's a new season. I'm encouraging you to put him first. Set your affection. Love on God just like he loves you. Put him first. Put him first. In all that you do. Because if God doesn't give you the ability, and if God doesn't do it, then I will tell you, it cannot be done. But I'm encouraging each and every one today, under the sound of my voice, this new season that you are about to go in, be positive. Embrace the season. Embrace change. Some of us don't like change. Some of us don't like to adapt. We are in a particular way and we are stuck in that way. And we don't want to be, but I'm telling you, I'm advising you, embrace change. In this new season, you're going to find out that, that God just going to change some stuff. You're going to eat your dinner and, and you're going to, maybe before you maybe didn't bless your food before, but you're going to find out now that you're not, you won't be able to put the, the fork or the spoon to your mouth without saying, God, I thank you. Before you leave your house, before you go in your car, before you go on the bus, you may find out that you're going to start praying and you're going to start seeking God. And you say, well, I've never done this before. Embrace it. Don't be frightened of it. You may find yourself reading God's word and then you're just thinking to yourself, wow, I never knew this. And you're reading more and you're reading more. Embrace it. Because while you're reading God's word, you're feeding your inner man. You're feeding your soul. Embrace that change today. I encourage each and every one today with the sound of my voice. Set your affection on things above and hold Unto his unchanging hand. Why? Because God will never ever let you go. Friends will let you go. And when you're looking for your friends, Savannah, when you're looking for somebody, you can't find them. It's only God can help you. Your parents, you, you go through a situation, you don't can't, can't explain it to your parents. You don't know what to say. But when you go to God, God understands, He hears. There were some times uh, that you know you want to go to mom, but, but mom can't, can't help you at that particular time. But you can go to Jesus because he will never ever leave you. He will never forsake you. And the thing about it is, and let me explain this to you in closing, we're going to pray. God is not partial. God is not prejudiced. 
So he's not going to hold up a list and say, well, you can't come to me because you've done this or you've done that or, or your face is too round or your face is too slim or you're too tall. or you're this. He doesn't have a list and say, you can't. He says, come unto me, all of you that are heavy laden and I will give you rest. All you need to do is set your affection on things above and hold on to God's unchanging hand. And listen, it don't matter about your age. Don't think that you're too young. Don't think that you're too big. Don't think that anything. God is willing and able to keep you. But I encourage you to set your affection on things above because we are in a change of season. Clap your hands and praise the Lord. Nothing that God cannot do. Amen. And we have many situations and circumstances. Amen. I'm going to ask you to come. And I will serve the Father with God. No any other treasure. For you are my heart. The spirit without measure unto your name I will be my sacrifice. Sing it again, and I will serve the Father God. No
Don't you know God? Oh no. 
if we can for 1 30 amen next week sunday amen we'll be having a special service here amen it just dawned on me it's our 11th year anniversary next week sunday amen so the 11 years we have been on this spot of ground many have come many have gone but jesus still remains amen and we thank god that we're still on the battlefield Amen. And as we are still on the battlefield, souls are still being born and still being one for the kingdom of God. We have a baptism coming up soon. Clap your hands for that. Come on, clap your hands for that. Amen. We are preparing for baptism. Amen. And for more souls that will come. Amen. In the name of the Lord. We have dinner here for everybody today. I'm crying.
and we give you the praise, and it is so, and so it is, in Jesus' name, amen. Lift your hands, everybody. And now may the abiding grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love from God, Heavenly Father, faithful fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, rule and abide, both now and forevermore. Everyone say, Amen. Amen. Say it again.